from Orlando, Florida, you're now listening to the Ozone Podcast, the voice of Orlando Magic fans. Join us every week for a unique fan perspective on all of the latest Magic news and updates. The show starts now. What's up, Magic fans, and welcome back to another episode of the Ozone Podcast, brought to you by DraftKings and part of the Basketball Podcast Network. We your host Al, myself, Anthony. Today is Friday, January 14th. We're recording our number 96th episode. Can you believe we're only four episodes away from number 100? That's surreal, man. Big it's surreal. Deal. It's massive. Can't believe people are listening to us talk for like 45 <laughs> minutes an hour, and we've done it 96 times already. Really exciting. Um, Al and I, we've been kind of talking about ways to celebrate whether that be um, you know, a giveaway or we're even talking about maybe getting one of you guys to join us on an episode. Maybe that 100th. We don't know yet. We're still discussing. If you have any ideas, um, definitely let us know, man. How excited are you, man? 100 episodes. You believe that? Almost I'm excited, there. man. If you ever watch any TV series, anything like that, they always make a big deal out of that 100th episode. Feels the same way for us, uh, especially when you consider how hard it's been. You know, the Magic were great. Our first season, that was amazing. We made the playoffs. That was great. Second season, we made it to the playoffs, but then all the injuries kind of started. And then we're, we're here now, all the losing, all the tanking. Uh, we know the future is bright. So those of you guys that are watching and listening to us, we truly appreciate you guys because we get it, man. It's been rough, um, but times are getting excited. And we have a lot of content in today's episode that, that shows that, that times are getting more and more exciting. Um, and hopefully, again, the podcast will gain even more listeners and more people watching us. Uh, but thank you guys because it's been a lot of work on our end, but we enjoy doing it uh, for all of you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in this episode, we are going to talk about some injury updates, the return of Jalen Suggs. I almost feel it. Maybe some, maybe a return of the Calvary also. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about front office and some of, um, you know, updates there. And then some trade rumors. There's been a lot of that going on, not just around the Orlando Magic, but definitely across the NBA um, but before we get into those topics, um, Al, I don't know if you know, but they just celebrated 17 years of Coach Carter. Coach Carter definitely goes down in one of the best basketball movies ever created, ever made, at least in my opinion. But it had me thinking, what would you say is your top three all-time basketball movies? So that's an easy one for me. So Coach Carter's also in my top three for sure. If not, honestly, my number one. Um, I read the book in high school. I watched the movie many, many times. Um, so without a doubt, Coach Carter is, is one of my favorite basketball movies. Number two, it's going to be a weird one. It's Like Mike. And I'm like going to ask Mike. you, why do you think that is? So if you think the, about who makes an appearance in that movie. It, ha it has to be because Lil Bow Wow is your all-time favorite rapper. <laughs> That's the only reason why anyone would pick Like Mike. Not quite, not quite. The man behind me in my background today, <laughs> Vince Carter, makes an appearance in that in that movie. And uh, at the time, I was like 13, 12 years old, I think, when that movie came out. And man, Vince Carter in a movie, my favorite player. I was here wearing his jerseys, playing ball. I, it had to be one of my favorite movies. So, was Vin, what, Are you sure it was Vince Carter? You sure it, it wasn't was, common? They look alike, but no, man. They look much. similar, man. Vince actually jumps over Bow Wow at some point in the movie, which That's wasn't a hard I, honestly, thing to do. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've seen that movie. I really don't remember like the players that were in there. I know that they had a lot of NBA players. Was T-Mac in there? I think he was. I'm not 100%. I do know Allen Iverson was in there for sure. Uh, Shaq, I'm going to say, uh, was in there too. Um, but yeah, man, that, that's the only reason why that makes my top three. And then if I had to choose one, there's a few I like, but if I had to choose one more... I'm going to go with He Got Game. Uh, Ray Allen does an amazing job in that movie. Uh, Jesus. So, Can't go Jesus. wrong with a Denzel movie. Jesus. Uh, that's my top three. What about you, man? What, what do you got for me? Those are good choices. Like Mike, definitely surprised me. I still <laughs> think it's because Lil Bow Wow is your favorite rapper. I still, I'm, I'm going to stick with that one. I'm going to keep um, on the down low. <laughs> yeah, no, right. Um, Coach Carter, definitely a favorite. Um, after that, I'm probably going to go with Glory Road. Big fan of Glory Road. Love the message and story behind it. There's a scene in Glory Road that that gets me every single time. It's when one of the players end up, you know, finally getting to the campus and they're ordering their food. And he asks for, you know, the food. And the guy's saying, taco, burrito. He's like, hadago. <laughs> and every, I swear, every time I listen to that part, it cracks me up. It's just funny. <laughs> the whole entire movie, in my opinion, is a really, really good movie. 
And then um, my surprise, which I'm, I'm going to add that I'm pretty sure no one would even think about or mention, um, is, is The Sixth Man. Okay. You remember that movie? The, I believe I've watched it. With the Wayans Brothers? Think. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yes. That's, a, that's a movie where the, the brothers they were on the, I can't remember if they were playing on the same team together or not. I think so. And then the brother passes away. And then through the whole entire season, his brother's like this this ghost that is like help him, helping him out throughout the season, helping him that's score, right. helping him win, things of that nature. It's a really good movie. It's, one, it's a good definitely one. a classic. You can throw movies in there like Air Bud. Um, you can put Blue Chips. It's definitely a, a classic favorite. Uh, White Man Can Jump, definitely in there. It's a lot of really good basketball movies. Definitely there a lot is. of good ones. Coach Carter, just, cream of the crop. I just wish there were more quality basketball shows, like TV shows. There's, a, there's plenty of football TV series out there uh, that, are, that are really fun to watch. But basketball, for some reason, can't quite make it. I don't know why. So I kind of wish that they would come out with a really good like basketball show, um, like a TV series that, 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 that makes it. Um, High School Musical. Uh, Go watch that. Eh, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. In today's episode, um, you know, it's it's. I, I feel like this just this past week, there's been so much that's going on. So there's a lot of different topics um, that we're really, really excited to kind of jump in and dive in. Um, the Magic, we've been struggling a little bit. We're on a 10-game losing streak. Since our last episode, um, we played against Detroit and then Washington twice. All three came out into losses. Um, real quick, what are your thoughts on, on those games and, and kind of things that stood out to you? To me, it's like a replay of last week, right? So we, we've lost a lot of games. Every single game has come down to the wire, which is fun for us fans to, to watch a team compete, but unfortunately they cannot find a way to pull the game when, when the, when the game's on the line, um, Detroit, we lost by five, Washington, we lost by two at home, Washington on the road, we lost by six. And it feels like. All those games could have been won. It, it came down to the final minute. And for some reason, I don't know if you, you're seeing this trend, but I know I've noticed this. The team just looks disorganized when the game's on the line, the final two minutes, whether it is calling the right time out, whether it is what player we're running, whether it is rushing a three-point shot, Cole Anthony did this a few times. Um, it, it, they got to figure it out. But that's, that's the part of being a young team. That's a part of learning to win in this league. So I'm excited that we're not getting blown out. I'm excited that we're actually competing in these games. The young guys have looked good. Um, Cole Anthony had a rough stretch this week where he kind of struggled to shoot the ball, but he kind of bounced back yesterday in Washington in the second half. Um, I think Franz has been solid throughout. Uh, he's been struggling a little more. The numbers are not quite what he was putting up a few weeks ago, but that is because Cole Anthony's back now and he's taking a little more shots. Um, but overall to me, man, it, we know what the season is all about. We cannot expect a lot of wins. They need to win one here and there because they've played hard enough. They've competed hard enough. They deserve to win a game here coming up. But um, for those in favor of the tank, uh, they must be excited. We're losing, but it's it's been fun to watch. Yeah, there is, they're close games, so I'm glad that we're not getting blown out. Um, but I don't care who you are. 10-game losing streak is really tough. They can preach about positivity all they want. Talk about the things that they're working on and things that they like seeing. Um, but losing 10 games straight is rough on anybody, especially for, you know, these guys that they're professional athletes. And before, you know, being on the Orlando Magic or the NBA, you know, they they come from at least in, uh, an environment where they, they may have won more than they lost. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case with this group. Unfortunately, we are still struggling with the injuries and we still have a, a young, young nucleus um it's rough it's tough but at the same time it's still competitive and the the guys are fighting one of the things that really kind of stood out to me that i thought was a little i don't want to say off or weird um it just caught my attention was uh the first game against washington a game that we lost by two that really came down to the final minutes and the very last play really came down to you know Franz and and his decision making you know there was a moment where um cole anthony got free from his man, was wide open as a point guard with the time winding down to be able to get the ball and go down. Franz drove it all the way down to the court, 
down to the coil on our side, and then in the last minute ends up passing off to Gary Harris. Gary Harris shoots the ball and then ends up getting blocked and not really getting a clear shot or not getting a, a good shot or a good attempt to kind of win the game. So that's the only thing that really stood out to me that was a little a little weird. Um, I'm not sure why the play wasn't made for Cole Anthony or at least for him to have the ball in his hands. I'm not sure where – like I, I, I wish I would have – been there like to be able to find out why or why it didn't happen i just thought that that was weird i would have liked our point guard to be able to take the ball down and make that decision especially a player that you know, has made and came up in clutch moments before um what were your thoughts on that play yeah same thing i think it looked a little bit again disorganized that, that's the word that i keep using to, to define this team in the final minute or two in the game uh, not only that one but even before that was to, that possession in particular there were shots that were rushed, whether it was Terrence Ross or Cole Anthony pulling up from 30 feet. Uh, the team has to learn to slow it down a little bit. I know the excitement is there. You made this comeback. You, you, you got the game within reach, and it feels like they're just rushing things rather than settling it down, running a pick and roll, and finding the best shot at that time. In that particular possession, if I'm not mistaken, Washington did a pretty good job initially preventing Cole from getting the ball. But then he found his way wide open, that he could have gotten the ball back. And like you mentioned, instead the ball went to Her Gary Harris, who, by the way, has done an amazing job this season. In the last month, especially, pump faking and getting open and then nailing the open shot. In that possession, he didn't do that. He, he took the open shot and, and got blocked by Bradley Beal. So again, it, that final minute, unfortunately, was just kind of all over the place. And, and the team just made the wrong decisions. Um, but I got I to gotta say, though, we've been really harsh on Coach Mosley. We, we kind of criticize everything he does, but you cannot deny the fact that these players enjoy playing for him and that they're fighting hard, man, because it's hard. Like you said, you lose 10 games in a row. It's not easy. It's very easy to just give up when you're down 20 and just let the, go, the game go. The Magic are fighting. They're coming back from this big deficits. Um, whether they, they trail by, half, by 12, 15 at halftime, and then they fight back, or they're leading by a lot, they lose the lead, and then they find a way to come back again. So... Give him credit for that, at the very least. I mean, with that said, 10-game losing streak, the guys are fighting for their coach. I get it. But the Orlando Magic then announced that they've extended the contracts of president of basketball operations, Jeff Woman, general manager, John Hammond. Are you surprised by it, or did you expect it? I think we all expected it. Um, we heard rumblings uh, after the draft and the, the coaching hire decision this summer that it was a done deal and they were just waiting to announce it. So we were kind of expecting this announcement for a while. Not sure what took so long, um, but to us, I don't think it's a surprise. And to really most Magic fans, it's not really a surprise to hear the news. And man, why shouldn't they? Uh, they made the playoffs the first two, two years, uh, in the last two years they were, they, before we got all these injuries happening. And after the injuries started happening, they've done a great job drafting players. They got Cole Anthony, they got France, they got Jalen Suggs. They haven't signed a single bad contract. They don't have a salary cap issue. They have a lot of money opening up in the in recent, in upcoming years. So why wouldn't you? Let them finish this, this job that they've started, this, this project they've started. Uh, and then it also helps us show some continuity to these young guys. So, hey, this guy's drafted you guys, this guy's signed you as a free agent. They're here, and they're not, going to go, they're not going anywhere. So I kind of like that message to our players. Um, I think it's well-deserved. They haven't done anything wrong to not deserve that contract. I was actually really surprised of the mixed reaction from the fan base. Like Some I people were saying, no, why do we do that? Fire them. We should move to a different direction. They sank the team, blah, zee, blah, zee, blah, zee, blah. It, it wouldn't make sense to switch now. Like Their, their plan, whatever their plan is, it's not even like, 25 30 percent done like nope you want them to finish this out imagine going into a different direction now in the midst of it like they this front office really hasn't had a chance to see jonathan isaac and markel through with their team actively yep i i definitely think that it was a good move they've done a really good job in bringing in young players and setting setting us up for the future they haven't mortgaged our future They've added additional first-round picks for the future. Um, I get that the record doesn't reflect great, but you take a look at kind of how their journey was in the beginning. They came in with Frank Vogel, decided that they want to watch the team a little bit before they make any decisions, um, really 
turn this team around quickly with bringing in Steve Clifford and then getting us into the playoffs. We made made the playoffs twice yeah. with them. And this is after having such a long playoff drought. Um, so it's it's we were able to see both sides. The both sides was finally getting into the playoffs and now working through this through this rebuild. And I, I definitely think that was a great move. Um, they're all under contract until 2025, 2026 season. Um, so I'm excited to kind of see what they come up with next because everything they've done so far, how can you not like the moves? It's all been smart moves, smart contracts. Even the Vucevic contract, people were kind of shocked that he got $100 million, But for the player that he was at the time and what he became that, that season following that contract, he deserves it. I mean, it was a movable contract, and obviously he got traded. Uh, the other big contract they handed out was Terrence Ross, Aaron Gordon. Uh, he, when they re-signed him, those guys were all moved. So it proved that they make these decisions in the time being for whatever decision, whether it is to compete for a playoff spot or whatever it may be, but those contracts are movable. Look at Jonathan Isaac too. If he comes back healthy, this guy's making $80 million, man. Like It's not like he's making a ton of money in today's NBA standards. Uh, Wendell Carter, another big contract, $56 million, man. Like For the way that this kid plays and at his age, that's a steal. So, like you mentioned, it hasn't been, there hasn't been a bad move, in my opinion, that they've made. Um, what I will say, though, were you surprised that it was a four-year contract extension? So that basically means they get to watch this season go through and then four years after that. So were you shocked by that, that they, they got such a lengthy contract, or you think that's the right move? I think the time frame is perfect. I think this is a great way for them to kind of really see this through. If we're looking at four seasons from now, four or five seasons from now, you're really going to be able to see Jonathan Isaac through, Mark F. Foles through, Coy Anthony through, to where we're really going to be able to see these guys in their prime. On the flip side, man, if these guys don't pan out, then, you know, the, you can't say anything. Like, you guys tried your best. Thank you. But no, thank you. Or we're all celebrating. And I think for me personally, one of the best decisions that this organization has done is hiring a president of basketball operations. Not necessarily just Jeff Weltman, but, ha but hiring a guy that is the, the sole control. Because previously, especially with Rob Hennigan, um, you know, Otis Smith, there was concerns that Alex Martins was kind of, you know, playing Pinocchio a little bit, playing sure. with the strings. And I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I have full confidence that he's the one that's kind of taking the reins and no one's telling him nothing is what he says and, in, in, you know, whatever he says goes. Now, obviously, I'm sure that there's approvals that need to happen, but he's the one on the phones. He's the one that's kind of, you know, organizing everything. So uh, from that perspective, you know, I'm, I'm definitely happy with what I've seen so far in the direction that we're at. And if you're not excited for what's to come, then I, I, I can't like, I don't understand how we're not eye to eye on this. Like, why is anyone upset that we're, you know, extending these guys, these guys have really shown everything, you know, what, what don't you like that they've done? I get the losing. I get that that's frustrating, but they really have at least put us in a direction to success. We're not successful yet, but we're at least like on a map that we can all see that we're leaning towards the right way. Yeah. And, and don't forget where they come from. Milwaukee just won a championship. Toronto just won a championship back in 2019. So they were part of those front offices that have won championships in recent years. So they started up th those mm -hmm. processes. They started those th guys. the foundation of, of those teams. So, hey, who was to say that that's not what they're doing here in Orlando? That they're, they're starting the foundation right now. We just got to be patient. Again, we lost a ton last year, but guess what happened? We ended up with a bunch of cap room. We ended up with Jalen Suggs and Franz Wagner. We're losing a ton this year. Let's see what it leads to. So, I mean, I think the suffering will pay off for us Magic fans. And again, I'm like you. I 100% agree. I think this front office knows what they're doing. They have a game plan. It may not be to our standards. It may not. They may not be as open as we we will want them to be when it comes to certain things like injury updates, um, rumors leaking out. But at the end of the day, I think that's actually to our advantage, uh, especially the trade rumors part, uh, to keep things in-house. Think about Vooch last year. We had no idea that was coming, and here they were. They they blew it. They blew it up completely the day of the trade deadline, and nobody had a clue. So you got to respect that and honor that about our front office. 
And I think that, you know, overall they've done a good job, at least from a player standpoint where they've had open dialogue and conversation with, with their players. And, you know, it, it, they, they were able to end relationships with players like Vooch and, and Evan and maybe Aaron Gordon um, in at least a, a good way where, you know, there's no bitterness back and forth and whatnot. Yeah. Now, Jonathan Isaac has really made some some waves. He just recently announced that he released a new book called Why I Stand. His book is now currently number one seller in the category of basketball biographies for Amazon. What are your thoughts on that? This is a player that is 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 polarizing. Not a lot of players or excuse me, not a lot of not a lot of fans and, and people that follow the magic. They've I've I've seen a lot of people that aren't too happy about this what are your thoughts on it so it's funny because you have both sides right there's a lot of support for him i've seen it on twitter and instagram and people are are saying that they cannot wait to read the book and and what a stand-up individual ji is and and i 100 percent agree with that um i'm intrigued Uh, i may buy it just because i want to see what the book is all about i think we have an idea of what his message is going to be um but it's definitely worth reading now GI uh, has made a lot of noise, uh, whether it's been with his appearances on Fox News, whether it's been uh, his stance on the vaccine situation. It's There's a lot going on with GI off the court. And my only thing is, I just hope that that doesn't interfere with the basketball part of things. I hope it doesn't interfere with his teammates, number one. Number two, with the way the team performs. Because we've been waiting, man, for this kid now two years uh, without seeing him on the court waiting for him to be that guy that can help us take this team to the next level. And I would hate for something off the court to get in the way of that. Um, so I support his book. I, I'm going to probably read it because I want to find out more about him and get to know him better on a personal level, understand why he feels certain ways on certain topics. But that is not to say that there are going to be some controversial topics there that people will not agree with. Um, but from my standpoint, no judgment. I want to read it just to get to know the guy more and understand his stance on things. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see the reaction of fans and just media in general, because he is a basketball player and he already has a, a spotlight on him as it is coming into all this. I'm indifferent. Like, I'm I'm happy for him. Um, this is definitely a, another part of his career outside of the game of basketball, and I think that that's the part that people really don't like. Um, dude, all, all that cares about basketball. Me too. Yeah, all I want is for this dude to be on the court. I know how great he is. I know how important he is to the team. If he wants to write a book, great. If he wants to sell it, perfect. If people are against it, so what, man? Wait, he he doesn't care the pe- about the people. Not that he doesn't care, but I'm sure it's 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 his decision, his life. That's what he wants to do. What makes it difficult is that we haven't seen him on the basketball court for a mm-hmm. very, very long time. And I think that people are having struggles with grasping the the outside of basketball life of Jonathan Isaac with the basketball life because people are putting an importance on the basketball side. And I get that. I understand it. I don't care what he does. You, know, you have so many different basketball players that do things outside. People judge Aaron Gordon a lot um, because he wasn't consistent on the basketball court and thought that he was just putting way too much focus on the rapping side. Why are we bothering Jonathan Isaac about his book and what he wants to do? I don't care about that. Like we we've and we're gonna talk a little bit more about this in a few, but we just got an update that you know Jonathan Isaac is is traveling with the team in an away game and he's putting up shots. Like there's there's progress and we're we're now seeing that. So I'm happy for Jonathan Isaac that you know he's his his book is selling. He's definitely has um a, a platform and listen fans have been asking for this. They've been asking for a player that can be nationally recognized. Someone that can really be put into the media and, and they're talked about Jonathan Isaac is that whether you agree with how it's happening or not, whether you agree with his ideas on, or his opinions on, on kneeling or standing, whether you agree with his opinions on um, the vaccine, like there's, he's vocal and I think that the part that that really puts a spotlight on him is that in almost every encounter, he's the first one to do it. So it's it's a storyline. You know, there's some type of relationship with Fox Sports. Well, excuse me, with with Fox. And the only thing I don't really like about Fox is that 
you know, obviously it's it's politics. So now they're mixing basketball with politics. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't like politics in the NBA because it distracts from the game itself. I'm okay with players having a voice outside of it. I just want I, I just want to see my team play. I want Jonathan Isaac on the court. And I think that the most important thing that people need to remember is that we're almost there. People are frustrated. I get it. But we're this close. Don't let that shine away from how important that is. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. And, and I mean, one thing that is interesting is J.I. is the opposite, I feel, of every other NBA player out there. You're not seeing him get in trouble because of drugs or women or distractions that's, that are affecting the team. It's the opposite, man. This guy is faithful as they come. This guy is, is again, he has his vision. He stands by it. So it's, I feel like this is just a, such a great kid in general, such a good human being. But again, like you mentioned, there's there's a tie, unfortunately, to the politics side that we don't want to see. Like, I, I respect this kid, everything he's done. I, I honestly respect him as an individual. But like you said, please keep the politics out of it because nobody likes that. Uh, I think that should be separate to the sport, to the game. And all that can do is create conflict in the locker room later on, and we don't want that. Um, so as long as that happens, I think that there will be no no impact by by this book or anything he does in the future. Yeah, what, what I like, what I respect about Jonathan Isaac is the fact that he's his own man and that yep. no one's going to tell him any different. If you don't agree with him, he's still going to make his decision. He's going to do whatever he wants. He's going to speak on certain matters that's important to him. You know, he, he moves at the beat of his own drum and he's shown that time after time after time. And I love the fact that he doesn't shy away from it either. Like you, mm -hmm. he'll, he'll discuss these topics in, in a press conference and he'll go into details with questions are asked. Yep. And if somebody takes what he says out of context, He's going to make sure that his voice is heard and hear reasonings behind it. It's not just it with, with him. It wasn't just, OK, I'm going to do this on the press conference. And this is what I meant. This dude also took it to podcasts, to Fox, to news channels. And he elaborated even more. He wanted to make sure that he reached as much people as possible, whether you agree with it or not agree with it. Um, you, you can't you can't say that Jonathan Isaac has a. A negative bone in his body he has a very very strong opinions mm -hmm. but he moves in ways that he does it with good intentions yeah. whether you agree with those intentions is completely your opinion i'm not telling you what to think but in his mind he's moving in a positive way and for that you can't can't knock him for it that's right now moving on john gabriel and brian hill are to be inducted into the hall of fame what are your thoughts Magic Hall of Fame, huh? Magic um, Hall of Fame. The honestly, little area, the little area where they um, they have the little plaque. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, tall, and you can. They have we're not big fans it. of it, but uh, you know, it, that's what we got. So we're, we're rolling with that. I mean, what can you say? Brian Hill, I think, deserves it more than I mean, more than deserves it. He was a head coach when the Magic saw their glory days with Chuck and Penny in Orlando. Came back in the early beginnings with Dwight. He's been tied to the franchise ever since. To this day, he is. So well-deserved, for sure. John Gabriel is the one that I saw some complaints out there saying, why? This guy doesn't deserve this. Why, why is he doing this? Why are the Magic honoring him? Um, man, I'm looking at his track record right now, and it's not too bad. Like Under his watch, the Magic made some big decisions, ended up paying off here and there. But primarily, on, he was part of the team on the Magic End, the glory days back in 94 to 96, uh, the 2000 team, Harding Hustle. He was involved in that year, was running things. He hired Doc Rivers. He drafted um, Mike Miller. He was the one that was coordinating the Grand Hill, Tim Duncan, and T-Mac trio coming to Orlando, which, as we now know, was this close to happening if it wasn't for some miscommunication with Tim Duncan and, and Doc Rivers. Um, and he was the executive of the year in 2000. So I think he's got a really good track record with the Magic, whether we agree or not um, with all of his decisions, maybe not, but you can't deny his impact on the franchise during his time. So that's the only thing I didn't quite agree with some Magic fans. Um, so in my opinion, both of them deserve to be there, and I'm glad the Magic are, are honoring both of them. I mean, people's biggest knock is the fact that, you know, he didn't want to give Shaquille O'Neal a $100 million contract. But other than that, you know, he's... It, this was a time where, I mean, we're, we're talking about, you know, trading Chris Weber for Penny Hardaway and a crazy amount of 
you know, first first round picks. We're talking about <clears throat> being able to take this this very very young team to the promised land at a very early age. You know, if things would have fell our way, you know, this this Orlando Magic team that we know now, uh, you know, could be completely different. We're talking dynasties. Whether that is that we're talking from Penny and Shaq, whether that could have been, you know, a, a Tim Duncan, Tracy McGrady, healthy Grant Hill. You know, there's there's a lot of things that didn't go our way, and it's a reason why, you know, we're looked at the way that we're looked at. But you know, during his reign, you you can't you can't take away anything from him. And you know, he's someone that definitely should be celebrated, as long as uh, as as with Brian Hill as well. These are people that are you know embedded into the into the history of the Orlando Magic. So definitely well deserved. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. Now, what is massive, jumping into our injury updates, is that it's been reported that Jalen Suggs will be returning tonight against the Charlotte Hornets. But also what was interesting with this past game um, in Washington is as we embark into you know this, this road trip, we were able to see that Jalen Suggs, Markel Fultz, Jonathan Isaac were shooting um, on the court with the team away, which is really great to see. So they travel with the team currently on the road trip. And we were able to see Jonathan Isaac, Markel Falls put up some really some some shots up. What are your thoughts on that? Does this really mean that we are really itching closer to these guys rejoining the team? Um, and in regards to what you saw in these clips, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, man. So I think it's exciting. I think this is uh, my favorite part of the podcast, right? This is what, what will have the biggest impact on the team here in the near future. So Jalen Suggs, I'm going to skip because we know he's coming back. That was a shock to all of us today when, when it was tweeted that he's actually coming back tomorrow. Finally. Initially, um, Coach had said that he may be coming back towards the end of the road trip. As a fan of the Magic, I know that could easily mean he was not going to return at all until next week. But thankfully, he's back tonight. So I'm, I cannot wait for that. Uh, faults we've known for a while. So he's, he had trouble with the team back, to, back in L.A. Um, back in December. He traveled to LA with the team. Um, but what was new was seeing a clip of him actually practicing on the road with the team and seeing it on video, not just a picture here and there. And it was good to see. Um, interesting. And I would, I would ask you for your feedback on this too, because I sent you the video. Your thoughts on Markel Fultz three-point shooting form, which we finally I love, got. I love how you kind of you threw that back at me <laughs> to hear my response. For I mean, listen, uh, we, we hear the fact that you know, Markel Fultz has been working on his shy, even the fact that, you know, he's injured and that's been a big focus. We took we take a look at his his jump shot, which is kind of like I, I feel like this is just a, a, a tradition from the Magic fan base. He's been gone so long. So anytime he takes a shot, you know, whether it's it's practice or whatever case it may be, we have to analyze it because you know we don't get any information. That's all we can do. But judging based on the a nine second video that we got to see one or two jump shots from you know it's <clears throat> i didn't see a hitch but the shot did still look funky but i've already accepted the fact that you know that's just the way that that markel falls shoot and i've i've accepted it his mid-range game is is insane everyone's concern is his outrage his um three-point range shots so i mean if, if you take a look at the jump shot if you take a look at the clip he still kind of shoots the ball from like an outer outer motion um really far away from the body and it's just awkwardly out it doesn't look like a standard jump shot but that's just the way that he shoots yep we're we're at the point where this this is what it is so i don't have an issue with it i just want to see my man on the court and i'm happy that you know we were able to get a a, a glimpse of you know him being able to showcase that you know he's he's itching closer what about you yeah I, I'm going to say the, the same. So it, it's not as pretty as maybe we were hoping. After he was out for a year and, and we, we didn't see him. And we heard he was working on that shooting form, especially from three-point range and further out. Um, but again, we can't judge it until we see it in the game. So that, that's what I'm going to leave it at. I cannot say anything until I see it live in an actual game. And the good news is John Hammond in an interview uh, here in the Orlando area said recently, that he might be only about two weeks out from returning. And we have this huge homestand coming up in which we play the Lakers, the Bulls, the Clippers. 
So all of our eyes are kind of aiming at that homestand as, as a date when Markel will come back. Nobody knows officially yet. But the fact that he's traveling with the team, he's joining the team in practice and shoot around, I think that must mean that he's really, really close. Um, so that's definitely exciting. So now you got Sucks for sure back with the team. Markel is right behind him. That leaves us with J.I., which also John Hammond said on in an interview recently, he is fairly close. If you were to watch him in practice, you would think he's ready today. But the medical team wants to make sure he is pretty much perfect before he gets back on the court. So we're getting some updates finally. Two out of the three, almost back. J.I. seems like a little bit more further out. Um, what are your thoughts on those comments about J.I.? The medical team wanted him to be near perfect before he gets back on the court. I mean, hey, we got an update. True. That's what we've been that's what we've been asking for. You know, shout out to Andy's Magic Minute. He brought a really good point on social media when he said it's kind of funny how we're starting to get all these updates, you know, pretty close after these contract extensions finally <laughs> happen. You know, I don't I don't believe in coincidence, but it is what it is. This is where we're at. Definitely happy to hear something back. Um, we knew that Markel Fultz was going to be first and then followed by Jonathan Isaac. Um, so we're we're excited that, you know, it's it's people were having concerns that, you know, we're just not going to see Jonathan Isaac at all this season. And with these comments, it makes me feel a little more comfortable and confident that we are, in fact, going to see him. Now, people were kind of making comments in regards to the clip of Jonathan Isaac, the couple shots that he, he took. He kind of missed them. And I, I find it crazy because it's like Jonathan Isaac, you it's it's hot or cold. Nobody's in between about Jonathan Isaac. We're every everyone's having an issue with him. Previously, when we saw him walk past by a Cole Anthony video, and he was kind of uh not necessarily limping, but he was walking in slow motion. I don't know. People were having an issue with that, saying there's no way that he's ready. And now we're seeing him take jump shots, and you know, he's he's looking good, he's looking fine, but yeah, he's missing shots, and now everyone has an issue with that. And I think that people need to be really, really careful um, in regards to our our emotions because we're really not like we're not we're not tracking shooting percentages around shoot around in in a in a five second clip like we're let's not let's not do that let's not do that 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 does good for absolutely nobody. I if you were to watch me at the gym, granted I'm not an NBA player, but I guarantee you before I jump into a game, I'm missing at least ten shots. That's a that's hundred percent happening. And I think that people need to relax a little bit. The fact that these guys are on the court um, is 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 an amazing step forward um, because this team really needs a lot of help. Calvary is almost here. Yes, sir. And I will say, though, again, like you mentioned, we went from, oh, Jay can't walk. Oh, Jay can't shoot. So like you mentioned, uh, I think we live in a world these days where everything is immediate gratification. We, we just want yep. that immediate. What, what am I seeing? That, that What I saw is what reality is. You know what it is, man. It's it. That's not the case. So we now know J.I. can walk. I, he, I went to a game last week. I saw him walking. He's fine. And we know he can shoot because he, he did it actually at the bubble uh, before he got hurt. And I'm pretty sure the moment that this guy comes back and hits a three, hits a layup, we're going to forget all about these videos that we're talking about right now. Um, if you're a Magic fan, your focus needs to be on positive. M positive mindset, which is these guys are this close to coming back. Uh, J.I., we don't know. It might be March. It might be after the deadline. It might be in February. We don't know yet. But the fact that we now we are now weeks, if not maybe a month or so away from seeing this guy back on the court, it's got to get you excited. And the fact that we now have uh, Jalen Suggs coming back and Markel coming back, be positive. Again, don't don't track w wins and losses. That's not what it's all about right now. You got to worry about this guy, this team being healthy and watching this team for the first time in, it feels like ages, being healthy on the court and competing. I mean, listen, Jonathan Isaac, Markel Fultz returning, they get acclimated with the new team. We get to see him on the floor, and then we got, you know, hopefully, you know, something happens in the trade deadline. We're gonna talk a little bit about that in just a few moments. Then we have the NBA draft. Like, there's just a lot of there's a lot of things to be excited for, man. I mean, I'm excited. Jumping into trade rumors, the Magic have been shopping Terrence Ross and Gary Harris per Eric Pinkett's with Bleacher Report. But the Magic are also reportedly looking to acquire a first-round pick for each of Terrence Ross, Gary Harris, and potentially Mo Bamba, says Jake Fisher. What are your thoughts on that? Is that even doable? I mean, we, we take a look at past NBA trade deadlines, 
And, you know, first round pick is not what we got for Evan Fournier. Evan Fournier just signed a crazy contract with the New York Knicks. And we weren't able to get a first round draft pick for that. Is it is it really possible for us to really get first round draft picks for these guys? I think uh, Gary Harris is pretty much in the same boat as Evan Fournier. So whoever trades for him, unless they know ahead of time that he's willing to resign with that team, you're pretty much renting him. Uh, and I don't think you're going to get a first, round, a first round draft pick for that. So you might get the Fournier trade. You might get a trade exemption and maybe a couple of uh, second round picks Ooh. or maybe just one. So as a Magic team, you have to decide, is Gary Harris a long-term piece or is he a guy that you acquired to relieve salary and that's it. You're trading for whatever you can get. Terrence Ross has a year left in his contract. I do think that there will be a contender out there who may throw a first round pick at the Magic. Uh, I mean, no, the Knicks just made a move for Cam Reddish, so they're out of the picture, I feel. But there's plenty of teams out there that are competing. Think about maybe a Memphis Grizzlies who are surprising the world. They may want a guy like Terrence Ross off the bench to just jack up some threes, and they might be willing to give up a first round pick because they already have a young team in place. Um, Milwaukee, I don't think they have any picks actually. So no, not Milwaukee. But you, you never know. My point is a contender will come up and offer you a pick for Terrence Ross if he's really available. Mo Bamba, though, man, that was a surprising uh, name to see there because it's hard. It's been up and down with Mo Bamba. He's had his moments, but one thing we can all make a conclusion of right now is that Mo Bamba still struggles with that energy level. He struggles with being consistent some nights. So before I answer whether or not we can get a first round pick for him, I will tell, I, I'm going to ask you this real quick. Do you really think the Magic are done with Mo Bamba? You, you really think he's gone? I, so for this front office to trade Mo Bamba, it's them admitting that they made a mistake, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily that they made a, a mistake, but they failed. Like this was a guy that they drafted that we were kind of pre we we were we were noted that hey this is going to be a guy that it's going to take a couple years for him to come around. We're at that point now. A couple years have passed. Mm -hmm. We still haven't gotten what we're seeing right now with Wendell Carter, who's a player that was in the exact same draft. We were they were one pick apart. And who's not happy with what we've seen with Wendell Carter? And he's already gotten his contract extension. Mm -hmm. So now we have Mo Bamba, which this is a season where it's kind of prove it to me. Prove prove this is this is the contract that we gave Wendell. This could be you. Now show me what you're able to do. But the more that I see from a fan perspective, I really enjoy Wendell Carter. Wendell Carter, in my opinion, is perfect for that five spot. He's exactly what I what I want, what I envision. So now what do we do with Mo Bamba? And I think that if you are going to sell, now would be the time to do it because we wait another season, we wait another season, so on and so forth. Maybe we get a contract extension. How much are you really going to pay him? Is it going to be worth that value? And do other teams see him as someone with that value, with that amount? So I don't, I don't know. I, I definitely think that for all parties involved, I think Mo Bowen just needs a, needs a fresh start. Maybe, maybe Detroit might be a team to look at, especially with uh, the Bo Bo trade not going through. Mm. Maybe that's someone that that could intrigue them as as a replacement. But I definitely think that it might be time for Mo to, to have a new environment. I like Mo. I like Mo a lot, um, and I just don't think that there's there's the right there's the right environment. I don't, I don't think that you know it's it's. I think the time has passed. And I think that if you can get something in return, why not? I think what makes it challenging is, is that he's a restricted free agent. So if he tells the Magic, listen, I don't like the offers you're giving me, I'm going to go and shop the market. I think the fact that he's so young, his wingspan, his shot blocking ability, he's third in the NBA in block shots. So a team that values a big man that can just rub up, run up and down and, and just catch alley-oops, which I don't know why we don't do more of that in Orlando, but that's another point. And he can shoot threes as well. I can see a team that offers him what Wendell is making, if not a little bit more. I really can. Yeah. The question is, if the Magic are able to resign him for maybe $40 million, 
instead of 50 and maybe four years instead of three, could Mo Bamba be your long-term kind of backup center or a center that's just kind of there whenever you need him or a stretch four if you need him? Do the Magic sign him at that kind of money, which would only be about $10 million a year. That's not a bad contract for a young guy that, that has still some potential. That's where I'm kind of confused myself. Are we just ready to give up on him because we've seen enough? Or do we sign him for a contract that any other big man out there would normally get? Think about this. Robin Lopez is making $5 million. You know he's got a potential. You know he's just here to be a leader on the, on the locker room. Could you, make, could you pay Mo five, my, five more million than that to be an asset in this team? Maybe not for now, but maybe long term. It's, it's tough. I'm not going to lie. It's tough. So I think the front office has to have some really hard to hard conversations with Mo Bamba. Find out where he's at. Tell him what the future looks like in this organization. If he's not ready to buy into that, you got to trade him. But if he is willing to buy into a backup role, fighting it out with Wendell, it's hard to give up a pick that a young guy that still has shown some promise. That, that's what makes it so hard. With him being a restricted free agent, there's, there's, it wouldn't make sense for him not to shop around the market. Mm-hmm. And I, I agree with you. I think there might, there definitely will be a team out there that will sign him a contract. And then the Magic have to make a decision. Do we match it? Do we not match it? If we don't match it, then we literally just let Mo Bamba go for absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. And all that development, all that um, experimenting, uh, everything goes down the drain. It's, it's something that you you can't you can't get back. All you got now is just memories. And that that is it. We're talking Trey Young. We're talking Luka Doncic and Mo mm. Bamba. And you know what sucks? We never got the chance to see extended minutes of Jonathan Isaac and Mo Bamba playing together, which would have been absolutely nasty. We, we got to see it in the summer league, and man, that was fun. That was fun. That the was the 10 fun. minutes that we saw. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And that, that's and the only that's, sucky part. That's the crazy part. Like, you don't. You, you can put Jonathan Isaac and Mo Bamba in together, and it, it it might be a completely different story. It might might open things up for Mo Bamba even more. Oof. The defense might be insanely crazy. Like, ima- imagine trying to drive into the basket, and all you guys are a bunch of forests, and you you really can't mm. can't do anything with it. the The length is is insane. The agility is is insane. The athleticism is crazy. And don't forget this. You now have Franz Wagner as your, your, your long-term three. Another great defender, guy that has a, a decent wingspan, can play solid defense. So technically, you could throw out there Mo Bamba, J.I., and Wagner with Jalen Suggs, with Markel. And this again, the defense could be nasty, but are we going to see it? I, I'm not quite sure. If I had to give you a prediction, which maybe, maybe we're too early for this, but if I had to give you a prediction, I think we keep Mo Bamba. We don't trade him. Um, at the deadline, I, I think they want to see something out of him with J.I. healthy, with Markel back. Would there be a sign and trade if another team wants him? Can we negotiate a sign and trade maybe in free agency if he decides to leave? That's also another option. But I don't think we've heard the last of a Mobamba trade possibly happening uh, here in February. But then again, I could be wrong. Who knows? And that and that's the crazy part. Come February tenth. It, anything could happen and now as we kind of edge closer to that time frame we're going to start to hear way more rumors way more conversations um and then also something to keep in mind is that these rumors that come out the orlando magic have been known to be tight lip this information is not coming out from our front office this is information coming out from free agents from from other teams things of that nature so just uh take that with a grain of salt when uh, the last NBA trade deadline, not one person said anything about Nicola and Chicago Bulls. Nobody said that. Not even a discussion, not Celtics. a word, nothing. Zero. Yep. RJ Hampton to Orlando, nothing was said. Not a speculation, not no wash, not no shams, nothing. Zero. So with that being said, be prepared for everything or be prepared for absolutely nothing. Anything can happen. But you never know, you know. Again, I and I'm I'm going to leave this here. Terrence Ross definitely deserves to be somewhere. I would like to see that man compete for for something. Right now, it, it feels, and I'm not sure if he feels this way. Obviously, but it feels like he's kind of stuck right now. 
the last the last remaining Rob Hennigan uh player. And uh I think I think it's time for for there to be a change. And as much as I love Terrence Ross and and want him to own up to that lifetime contract, you know, I think it's is best for everyone that, you know, a move definitely happens. I, I think so too. And I also think that RJ Hampton deserves more of a defined role off the bench with point guards on this team. Because right now he's being thrown to play the point guard, to play the shooting guard, to play whatever he's needs to be played. I think when you have Markel, Jalen Suggs, Cole Anthony all healthy, you now tell RJ Hampton, hey, you're a shooting guard off the bench. Go out there and give me buckets. And I think that could be fun to watch. So I think he deserves that opportunity as well. While we are in this developmental stage for the team, we, we really don't know, uh, again, what we have in him because he hasn't really played one position so far. Absolutely. So upcoming um, upcoming uh, ahead is Charlotte, Dallas, followed by Portland and Philadelphia. What are your predictions? I hope they keep competing. Uh, the only win I see there, it's going to be against the Portland Trailblazers. They're a mess right now. They don't have Dame. They don't have McCollum. So that's the only really game I can see us winning. They got Anthony Simmons. He's a beast. Yeah, dude's been balling. Uh, but honestly, that's the only team I can think we can be out of that list. But I do expect to see a, cl- a few close games uh, between the um, – Especially Saturday. Dallas could be a, a funky game. I think we, we can compete with them. Uh, Charlotte, I think they're really hot right now. So I think they might they might kick our butts tomorrow. But then again, we got Jalen Suggs. You never know how that may impact the team. Um, but it'll be a fun week. I just don't expect more than maybe one one win. How about you? Yeah, I'm looking at the same game. Portland, really excited to see Jalen Suggs back. That's going to be fun. Um, I'm curious to see how much time they'll end up playing him. Um, I'm expecting definitely many restrictions. We had a conversation whether or not, you know, we thought that uh, he would be starting or not. I don't believe he will, um, but it's going to be really fun to see his his progress and kind of see how he uh, how he handles the the thumb issue. And my my issue with Jalen Suggs has always been that I feel like he falls way too much. I always see him on the ground. And a part of that is is just how he how he hustles. So I'm, I'm hoping that. You know, he protects his body a little bit more and, and no more injuries. Let's stay healthy. I, 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 please, we need that. <laughs> yeah, 100%. All right, man. With that said, we're we're looking forward to hearing more things around the team, um, updates on on more updates on Jonathan Isaac, Markel Fultz. And on that note, it's a wrap, man. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you for listening to the Ozone Podcast, the voice of magic fans. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Ozone Pod. And remember to subscribe and leave a five-star review on all your favorite podcast listening platforms.